exiting the back rooms is probably one of the most confusing and terrifying things imaginable. You're already in an infinite labyrinth of unknown places with seemingly no escape. How in the world could you ever find a way out? Well, fear not, friend, because Brugly is here to help. In this video, I have compiled all of the theoretical backrooms exits that I have ever gone over. Now, of course, no one knows if these are real or not. No one knows if they even work. We're just assuming here, but I would rather have an assumption than be stuck in the backrooms forever. Thank y'all for watching. Enjoy the video. The level is called level 922-337203-685-477-5810. Yes, that is a really long number, but the shorter name is level memories. That's the level name and it is classified as a class undetermined due to a bunch of mysterious properties, unknown information, and undocumented entities. Now, if you remember that video that I posted eight months ago called The End, well, that level was supposed to be the very last level of the back rooms because it was the signed 64-bit integer number and it seemed like nothing could be found past it because it's an infinite staircase and no one knew what was after but this level was found recently and it pretty much proves all of that wrong level memories is some kind of a mishmash back rooms level museum it's made up of a bunch of different rooms or exhibits that all look like different parts of different back rooms levels so one room room could look like level zero and the one next to it could look like level seven or level 999 it's whatever very interesting there are also rooms for levels that have been classified as negative levels or sub levels which means that every single possibility can be seen here there's also a ton of different entities here but they're all in exhibits or cages for the most part you know kind of like cavemen from real life museums and stuff like that and because of this layout the level has also been nicknamed like i said earlier the back rooms museum. Not all the entities are in cages, and every once in a while you'll run into an entity that's just wandering around, and these are very dangerous because they're the most dangerous versions of that entity. So if you see a wretch or something just walking around, we'll run away because they'll chase you until they get you. The rooms or exhibits that are made up of different levels also have entities that are common in those levels. So if there's a level 7 room, then there's going to be the thing on level 7 entity there or if there's a level 5 room there's going to be the beast of level 5 on the paintings in there this level is also hypothesized to be the actual back rooms exit to the front rooms or real life and there's actually an exhibit room with a floating earth in the very center of it and around the earth is stuff that's from real life like beaches and birds and that kind of stuff it's like an earth exhibit and supposedly if you touch that floating earth in the center of the room then you'll wake up in real life and all of the stuff that you experience Experienced in the back rooms will just feel like a dream. Now, the hard part is actually finding the Earth exhibit room because there's literally rooms for each level of the back rooms. And since no one knows how big the back rooms is or if there's even a cap on how big it can be, no one knows where the front rooms will fall in this. But if you do manage to find it, I guess congrats on escaping. Also, since this is the hypothetical real back rooms exit, maybe the other back rooms exits that I've talked about have not been real exits exits and have been fake exits who knows i mean this also might be a fake exit no one knows let's be real there's not even a real exit you're trapped here forever as far as groups or colonies goes there is a small one here called the guiders and they try to help people make it to that earth room exhibit to exit and they'll show you around the level to the different exhibits if you want to go to a certain level to enter this giant backrooms museum level you have to be on the level before this and face your biggest fear that's behind the door at the end of the hallway on that level if you can make it through that fear and are mentally and physically intact then you'll wake up here in the backrooms museum and so far that is the only way possible to enter this level to leave you can no clip into the corner of any of the level exhibits that you want to go to you know if you roll past level 450 you just walk into the exhibit and no clip in there and you'll be sent there or you can walk around until you find the reality room with the floating earth in the middle and touch it and you'll be sent to real life which honestly i think is a pretty cool exit it. You know, it's hard to get to, it's rare, and it might lead to reality. But who knows? It might be fake. And it might send you somewhere else. No one will ever know. So yeah, that was the backroom.
backrooms level memories or the backrooms museum i think it was a pretty cool concept to have a place where you can see all of the backrooms levels kind of like their displays at a museum or exhibits at a museum i think it's pretty neat and i also like the fact that there might be an exit here i think it makes it even cooler Backrooms level the barrier is classified as a class undetermined because, to be honest with you, not much is known about it. It seems safe, but it almost has no information about it at all. When or if you go to this level, you will wake up in a grass field outside of a tree line. The field is full of rolling little hills and lush grass, and these hills and grasses lead into a big, thick, dense population of woods. This wooded area has lakes and abandoned cabins and all sorts of different types of trees in it. It kind of gives you a sense of nostalgia because it feels almost like the woods from reality, our earth. The liquid in the lakes doesn't seem to be water, which is weird, but it is drinkable, and there's even been fish seen swimming in it. So I guess you can get in it if you want to. Also, it's pretty weird that fish are in lakes here because normally bodies of water in the back rooms are empty. So that might mean this is somehow aligned with earth. The cabins I mentioned earlier are abandoned, but as far as we know, they're safe to go into. Inside of the cabins, you'll notice that they're just like Earth's. Most of them have a small kitchen area and a bedroom slash living area together as well. Sometimes though, people have been seen walking into the cabins and never coming out. It's thought that when this happens, the person is likely sent to level negative 188, so watch out for that. But again, inside of the cabins feels like home. It feels like you're in an earth cabin. And to add to that feeling, every once in a while, you'll see a wild animal running through the woods. And these animals aren't just any backrooms creature though, they're animals from from real life, like completely normal ones. Deer, bear, moose, literally like real creatures, real creatures from Earth. Except these creatures aren't aggressive, they're more docile and friendly. But between the relaxing feelings of the woods and the home feeling of the cabins and the exact animals from real life, you might get the sense that this level is connected to Earth somehow some way because so far it feels like you're just there already now there are some other weird things that happen in the barrier level as well like sometimes it'll just completely downpour the rain here and the rain itself will cause the sky and the air to turn different colors and to swirl together the rain also changes the barrier's temperature drastically which is pretty weird because it doesn't happen to that extent in real life there are some other weird things that happen here as well. One of those weird things is actually how you get to this level. If you notice at the beginning, I didn't say when you get here, I said if you get here. Because barely anybody can. To get to this level, it is done by following a glint in the sky for weeks on end. Now a glint is like a light or a shining blinking thing. The glint can appear in any level and it can be seen when traversing or going between different levels as well. It sort of calls you to it and draws you in and you know you're supposed to be following it. You just know you have that feeling. However, this glint does not appear to everyone and evidently only a few people people can even see it. And even out of those few people who can see it, almost none of them make the full journey to the barrier level and they end up giving up or perishing along the way. Sometimes a person could have followed the glint in the sky for weeks and then randomly lost it and they were forced to stop. But for the very few who have made it to the barrier, they saw the level I just described. Rolling fields leading into woods dotted with cabins. Now this is where it gets tricky. It's thought that if you go deep into the woods, there is supposedly a massive tower placed there. It's been nicknamed the viewing point, and there is no known purpose for it other than just to be weird. But it's somewhere past that tower where there's supposed to be a location to get back to Earth. Now the exact possible location for this quote-unquote portal 
to reality has not been found. Like I said earlier, no one knows if it actually exists or if it's just folklore or made up or whatever, but people have been seen going into the woods and have never been heard from, seen, smelt, or anything again. So they have to go somewhere, right? I mean, they're not just walking off the face of the earth, or are they? People think since this level is so similar to how reality looks, that it itself is some kind of gateway. Like the woods itself will eventually transition over to the woods from earth i mean the wilderness the cabins the animals they're all like the ones on earth and even the air feels the same what do you think do you get back to reality by wandering deeply into the woods or do you end up like the nameless people who have walked in and have never walked out there's thought to be one colony outpost in the barrier but the people who are a part of it uh they don't talk <laughs> and they don't even open their mouths at all no one knows why but they could be hiding some kind of secret to enter this level you have to be one of the lucky few to have seen the light in the sky and then follow it until you get here now if you truly see the light then it'll only take you to the levels that take place outside for an unknown amount of time until you make it to the barrier to exit the barrier you can walk into the woods for a very 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 low chance of being sent to reality if that's even how it works we still don't know it's just heavily speculated that that's how it would work or you can walk into a cabin and be sent to level negative 188 or you can just sometimes randomly get sent wherever the level chooses it almost almost seems like the level has some sort of brain or consciousness because it chooses who gets led here and it chooses who gets sent out or not. What do you think? Do you think the woods of the level eventually fade into a forest from Earth? And if you walk deep enough into them, will you just walk into a national park or a forest? Or do you think that it's not a real exit and the back rooms or something or someone lures people deep into this level for evil reasons? Let me know in the comments down below. The Promised Land is classified as a Class 0 and is extremely safe and secure, and it actually used to be considered a level only in legends or tales because no one actually knew if it existed or not. But now it's been pretty much explored extensively, so most of the level is documented. The level itself is a huge building with exactly 300 floors and around 1,000 rooms that are spread throughout. And each floor has these pink glowing lights in the ceilings, which would drive me crazy to be honest, but whatever. These lights have been known to randomly turn on or off, so just be aware of that. And all the floors have windows that look out to the outside area, and when it turns daylight outside, the curtains and the windows will disappear, and a floor made out of clouds will appear directly outside the window. Kind of like the floor of level Zenith. This cloud floor actually has these trees that grows in the ground, and they produce a weird fruit, which you can actually eat. The day-night cycle here is pretty much the same as real life, so the windows disappear during the day, but they'll reappear at nighttime. I mentioned earlier that there are over 1,000 room types, so here are some of them. There are bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, dining rooms, bathrooms, infirmaries, lounges, shops, an outside area, nightclub area, the business area, and the promised land resort. Each of these areas are pretty much exactly how their name sounds, so I'm not going to describe them. Like, the bedrooms, the bedrooms, the dining rooms, the dining rooms, it's pretty simple. Now a common question asked is, well, where did the promised land come from, or how did it get figured out? Well, according to the fandom, the level's first ever mention was found on a note in level zero near a ripped partygoer's mask. The note said, quote, the last of us are here, and there was a picture of the Promised Land level next to it. Now nearby that note, there was a book called The Promised Land that pretty much had all of the level's explanation inside of it. Obviously the level is really chill, and as soon as the book was read, rumors of this sanctuary level spread quickly throughout the back rooms. So lots of people tried to get there, but very few did. There are only two entities here, and those are the cloud trees, which I mentioned earlier, and storks. Which are pretty much storks from real life, except they're more intelligent and tameable. As far as bases here, there are actually a few. The first one is the Backrooms Colonists, which is just a conglomerate of colonies that are loosely linked together. 
Then there are the Forgiven FOJs, which is a group of the followers of Jerry that somehow got to the level. And as always, they're nice unless you talk trash about Jerry. Lastly, there is the Reliquay Outpost. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Which is just an outpost of soldiers that fought in a war that actually happened on this level a long time ago called the Summer War. To enter this level, you can dive through a painting on level 384, but just like all of the entrances I'm about to say, it's extremely rare for them to work. And there's also a rumor that no clipping into a pink light on level negative 150 will work. But again, just a rumor. It's thought that you can also fall down stairs on that big long numbered level that I went over a few months ago to get here. But as always, you just gotta get lucky. To exit this level, you'll actually be exiting the back rooms. So you just gotta find a door labeled exit, and when you walk through that door, you'll be at the same place where you entered the back rooms from. Pretty cool. This might be one of my favorite theorized exits because it's literally so rare. I feel like it's kind of a myth in a way, you know? Pretty cool. Now, unlike most other levels I've covered, there's actually been some documented expeditions to try to find how to get here. There are six expeditions, and the first one was made by four members of the Republic back in 2004. They were sent back to level zero after making it to level 1051. Now, the second and third expeditions were not documented, but the fourth one was. This one was made by seven people from the Backrooms Colonist Group. It happened last year in 2021, and this is marked as the first conclusive successful mission to get to the Promised Land. Because when the group made it to level 384, where that painting is, which by the way is an extremely safe level, a member of the group disappeared. And it's thought that they went through the painting and made it to the Promised Land, and feasibly out of the back rooms. The fifth expedition had five more explorers no clip into the painting on level 384, and they haven't been heard from since. So it's just thought they either made it, or they're somewhere else. The last expedition had 17 explorers, and it's officially known that four of them are currently in the Promised Land and have not escaped the backrooms. So Backrooms level 710, or Ring and Ruin, is a newly found level. It's classified as a class undetermined since it's pretty new and because several of the properties here are extremely mysterious and not really understood at all. The level entry starts with a quote from a wanderer named Amy. Quote, I opened my eyes to see a hound, so close that I could taste its hot breath. Foul saliva drips from those deadly fangs. A hunting knife materializes in my right hand. I know this place keeps the hounds from hurting me. It is as terrified as I am, poor thing. It disappears, and the knife becomes a chocolate chip cookie. So as you can see, off the bat, this level is already showing some weird properties. Level Description the level is made up of two distinct areas. The first is a silvery ring that's floating in the sky. The second is the ground under this ring with some ruins and an archway. And you'll want to hear what those things are all about in a second. So the silver ring floats horizontally in the sky, directly above those ruins on the ground. It never moves position and never goes up or down, but it's absolutely massive and is around 400 feet in diameter which is the distance from one side of the ring to the other, and 400 feet is actually taller than the Statue of Liberty, so that kind of gives you a gauge on how big this thing is. There's no visible propulsion system or way that it's holding itself up there in the sky, so it's a complete mystery how it floats, although it might be a supernatural intelligence that keeps it up there. The ring interacts with one person at a time on the level, and that person is seemingly chosen from any other backrooms level to be sent to the ring randomly. Like they could just be walking on any level and get no clipped to this ring inside of it. And that person will be stuck inside the ring anywhere from 3 days to 23 days before they returned. So the inside of the ring is just a large hallway, and that Amy person from earlier was sent here for 20 days and was able to remember some of what it was like. She says the ring has no doors from the inside, only four distinct windows on each cardinal point. So like north, south, east, west, like a compass. Each of these four windows has a little room next to it with different purposes. 
The room by the north window has a desk and a chair in it with paper and pencil. The east window has almond water and food there. The south window is a bedroom, and the west window has a room next to it with a very small box inside that each person has to put a personal item in as sort of a sacrifice, apparently. When you're here, you're motivated to do certain things from this gut feeling that the level gives you. The ring itself seems to be alive in some way because it communicates with people on an intellectual level. It doesn't use language or signals, it just gives these people the feelings or the instincts to go do things. So for example, it could give a person the instinct to go to the south room or the north room. The ring itself seems to be like some kind of observation and evaluation structure that literally has the sole goal of studying humans to see how they interact with certain stimuli like those four different rooms. It's also thought that the ring was put here by maybe a higher power or an artificial intelligence because of how futuristic the technology is. Summary of the ring. So pretty much to summarize what I just said, the ring is a circular hallway with four rooms and each room has different things in it. The ring itself interacts with each person that goes there through instinctual brain waves. And it's almost as if it's observing how humans respond to stimulus. Sometimes this ring intelligence will even put entities or pictures of different backrooms levels in the hallways to see how people will react to them. Even though nothing will actually hurt you, they're just put there to see how you interact and change based off of what it shows you. It's kind of like a science experiment and the humans are the test subjects. You know, you've seen those things with the rats in the mazes. That's kind of like what this is, but who's the scientist and who's studying us? No one knows. The Ruins On the ground under this ring is a circle of earth with no vegetation. This circle is 1320 feet in diameter, and in the middle of it, there's this huge archway called the Harbinger Arch, along with some other stones standing up beside it. No one knows how this got here, who built it, or what it actually means, but it's thought that this archway is a portal to different realms. And maybe even just maybe, a true exit to the back rooms. Sometimes, if you look through the arch, you can actually see into different realities, even outside of the back rooms or the front rooms. These are completely different universes. And sometimes you can look through and see the real Earth. People have been witnessed walking under the arch and into it, and never walking out on the other side, so it definitely does lead somewhere, but no one knows where or if it's trustworthy to go into. The arch and the ruins are kind of treated as some kind of spiritual thing in the back rooms, and you get the vibe that they're sacred. After these ruins were discovered, other things that had been discovered previously in the back rooms kind of started to make more sense. Like there's these small carvings in wood and stone circulating through the back rooms in the shape of arches or rings, or there's whispers floating about of a so-called pilgrim's path being talked about in notes on the walls and in carvings. Either way, the ring and its intelligence and the archway and the ruins with their supernatural and interdimensional powers are some of the most unique things in all of the back rooms it seems. So level 922-337-203-685-4775-807 is the signed 64-bit integer limit on a computer in real life. And that same number just so happens to be the supposed highest backrooms level and the most dangerous level in existence. Lots of people think that the backrooms go on for an eternity, but people who know about this level know that they do not go on forever. The entities that have been able to get to this level have not been able to get any further for thousands of years. And this level is not only extremely dangerous, but it's also extremely hard to enter. I don't know why you'd want to, but we'll talk about that later. The only description available of this level is that it's a simple, cold, brutal staircase that goes on for seemingly an infinite amount, up and down. The color of the staircase is said to be indescribable either a black-white color, which yes, that's a juxtaposition, yet at the same time, it's devoid of color. And if you look at the stairs for too long, it'll make your eyes teary because of the lack of color and your brain can't comprehend it. You can't even feel your weight on this level, which allows you to walk up the stairs for an infinite amount of time. There is no known level above this level and the stairs continue for what is theorized as billions of miles in each direction. And as far as entrances and exits go, there are only two 
possible ways to get into this level. Both of these are just hypothesized, they're not for sure. The first one is that there is another level called The End, and it's that library room I talked about in my Liminal Spaces Iceberg video. And that level is a fake end, and it's actually a decoy for this level. And some think that there is a secret entrance among all the books to the real end, this level. The other entrance is theorized to be on level, oh, another big long number, 344-1684-1123-1509-8764-90285. It said that there is an extremely rare chance of that level leading to this level. And as far as exits, there are only theorized ones as well. For example, some think if you climb 5,000 stairs exactly and then jump over the rail into the middle, this will send you back to reality. And some people think if you climb just 85 stairs and then jump off into the middle, this will take you to level question mark, question mark, question mark. This is an unknown level full of skin stealers, hounds, and as well as insanities. And level question mark, question mark, question mark has no known escapes, so don't even try to go there. Your best bet is to try to climb 5,000 stairs to get back to reality, but no one even knows if that works or not. There's another level that is numbered the exact same as this one, except it's negative 922337203685477807. And this is theorized by some to be the furthest down you can go in the back rooms. While the positive version of this number is the highest you can go, the negative is the furthest down you can go. This negative version is known to be an infinite void of glitches. The walls, the ceilings, the floors, the air, everything is glitched and lines of code fly through the air and roll on the walls around everything. If you for some reason go to this level, you will cease to exist as you know it because your brain won't be able to comprehend the glitches. You're left alone with all your memories and the constant buzzing and glitching noises and this will drive you to insanity. Unlike the positive version of this number, there is no known way to get into the negative version. So how about don't even try? So to do a quick recap, the supposed highest level of the back rooms is level 922337203685477580 and is apparently an infinite staircase that goes up and down with only two theorized exits and the supposed lowest level of the back rooms is the exact same number but negative and it's an infinite void of glitches and lines of code both sound pretty fun to me So in the fandom universe, the way out is widely accepted as the backroom's exit. The physical way out will appear to each person differently, but no matter what form it takes, it will always be surrounded with this intense yellow light. Nice. The way out typically appears randomly on any level of the backrooms and is extremely rare, obviously, pretty much to the point where it's almost impossible to appear. So far, only one confirmed person has even escaped through this exit. Reddit user Enigmatic Eva. That's according to the fandom, not me. It's also important to note that the way out leads to a random place in reality. So you'll have no idea where you are, unless you just know geography, I guess. There is one small issue with this exit though, and that's when you go through it, you'll temporarily be in this weird position where you're not in actual reality, but you're kind of in reality. For example, the person that I mentioned earlier, Enigmatic Eva, that has supposedly exited the back rooms, says that there were some anomalies when they went through the exit. To start with, there was an insane amount of security cameras everywhere Eva exited, or that they still heard the buzzing noise from the back rooms in her head, and there wasn't any life in this reality. There was no people, no cars, no animals, nothing like that. Enigmatic Eva did continuously mention a weird creature that she only referred to as quote them in their reddit thread and that it was hostile and creepy so that's really weird when Eva went through the way out she ended up in London but she lived before she went to the backrooms in the United States so that made Eva think that the backrooms is somehow connected and intertwined with our reality so like you can physically travel around the world to different places but you just don't know it nice Soon after Eva recounted those weird things in her reddit posts, her replies started to not make any sense, but her reddit history did seem like she's living a normal life, so it really seems like when the person exits the backrooms through the way out, the real world and the backrooms sort of overlap temporarily and blend together until it slowly fixes itself and puts you back in your real world. Nice. So to summarize, the fandom posits that the way out is an exit that can appear on any level of the back rooms. It can appear in any form, but in this case it was a staircase. See what I did there? And every time it appears, it's got a bright yellow light that is flashing and strobing inside of it. If you go through the gateway, you'll be in some sort of in-between state between reality and the back rooms until eventually reality will go back to normal and you'll be back to how your old life was. Nice.
It's got a survival difficulty of zero, and it looks like an infinite arcade. This arcade looks like it's from real life, but it's obviously not, it's in the back rooms. The outside of the place looks normal. You can see cars and trees and streetlights, just basic outside stuff. Only problem is you can't get out there until you've done a few things, which we'll talk about later. The arcade games here are not like retro arcade games like you're probably thinking. They're actually games from real life, like Minecraft, Terraria, Roblox, you know, that kind of stuff. Call of Duty even. And the machines are known to induce this really relaxing effect on you. And this effect can actually increase your sanity if you've lost any, so nice. nice. They also induce feelings of normalcy, obviously, because they're from real life and anything from real life in the back rooms will induce comfort and normalcy. The only downside to playing these games is if you have rage issues, because if you hit the machines or if you break something, you'll instantly faint. And every time you do that, again, you'll faint over and over again. So don't do that. There's hardly ever anyone here though, except in the colonies that I'll talk about later. That aspect alone can make people kind of uneasy about this level because it's just a huge, infinite, empty arcade. Sometimes though, these weird meteorites fall from the ceiling inside of the building, but they don't do any damage to the machines or the floors, the ceilings or anything, which leads people to believe that they're just an illusion caused by the lights on the level, which is kind of weird, but what in the back rooms isn't weird. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can indeed get back to the front rooms or reality from this level. But to do so, you kind of have to complete a checklist, kind of like the 13 tasks Hercules had before he could, you know, become what he was. These things can last anywhere from four minutes to 12 years. And the longevity of the task depends on how hard it is. They can be anything from slaying an entity or a creature to eating a certain amount of food or drinking a certain amount of water. It really just depends. If you don't complete the tasks that you've been given, you'll either be unalived or you'll be condemned to stay in the back rooms forever and never escape. Nice. To get one of these checklists, you have to walk towards the sunset on this level, which I guess you can see through the glass panes in the windows, for an unknown amount of time. And then you'll be given a checklist in an unknown way. I really like the details here. But yeah, after you walk towards the sunset and get your checklist, you'll have it, and then you'll have to start completing your task. There doesn't seem to be a correlation on why these tasks are given to certain people, or why some of them are a lot harder than other ones, but it is what it is. If you do complete your tasks, the glass doors to the level will be opened up, and you can walk out, and you can go back to reality through those doors. There are actually a couple colonies here, like the Backrooms Colonist and Cafe Studio 52-1. Now these areas are just kind of chill, relaxing, eatery kind of areas that are on the level and these are really the only people that are here at one time. Other than that, there aren't really many wanderers here because they're out completing their tasks that they've been given by the level. The next colony is the waiters. These are the people who help you learn how to use the arcades and stuff like that. The last colony is called the Front Rooms Organization, and this is a really weird, mysterious outpost that not really many people know about. They lead people to glass doors to escape the back rooms, but again, it's unknown how that works. But it is known that they're there. Now I'm sure you've all been waiting on how to enter this level, and you can enter this level by running trueend.exe on the computer from the end level. Or you can even get here by glitching through a purple glitchy wall on level 11, which that would be really easy. You'd have to be really lucky to get that one. There's also like nine other ways to enter, but these ones are the coolest ones. There are other ways to enter the level, <laughs> but the level 11 one is pretty much the easiest, and the running the trueend.exe file is also the easiest. To exit, you can complete your given tasks and be freed from the back rooms by walking out the glass doors on the level, or you can fail your given tasks and be condemned to wander the back rooms for an eternity. There are other ways to exit the specific level of level 3099, but who cares about those? We're talking about how to leave the back rooms here. 